Todd. I thought you had some temp work today, man. Yeah, they made me an offer, but the job didn't feel quite right. Yeah, what was wrong with it? Yeah, it was in an office. Ooh. You know, that's a concession you might eventually have to make. You know, Alex, I live in New York. If I sit here, it will come. <laughs> you see? Hey, I have a question. Why don't you ever play the messages? Ah, you know, because it's always like, hi, Todd, how are you? Hi, Todd, let's get together. I don't want to be a part of that. <laughs> Todd's grandpa. I want my copy of Lonesome Dove back. I gave it back at Thanksgiving. <laughs> Alex, hi. It's Megan Murphy. Oh, my God. Surprise, I know, but I'm in New York unexpectedly. Long story. Anyway, I would just love to see you. If you're free tonight, call me. 555-0198. Yes! <laughs> Don't be too eager, my friend. Come on. Fate has just brought Megan Murphy back into my life. It's like the sun has broken through the clouds and made everything beautiful. Please tell me that's 12 vegetable soup on the stairs. <laughs> Wiseman, you're never going to guess who called. Mr. Miller, our middle school gym teacher. No. Why would he call? I don't know. I've just kind of been thinking about him lately. <laughs> Megan Murphy called. She left a message on the answer machine. She wants to see me tonight. She thinks she can just waltz back into your life after five years? Forget it, Alex. We've moved on. <laughs> what is the problem? This is the best relationship I ever had. You were together for seven days. Yes, but they were the best seven days of my life. I mean, the week was like a movie montage. Except, you know, we didn't make love in the sand. Make love? What are you, a hundred years old? I'm just trying to be romantic. I don't want to cheapen it by making it all about sex. It, it was hot, though, right? Oh, why is it... <laughs> Dude, you should have been there. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. I was there for the tragic ending. Yes, yes, day eight. Oh, yeah, okay, yes, I was crushed, but come on. I mean, it wasn't her fault that her father got transferred to Kenya. Why did she wait five years to call you? She was in Kenya. They have a fledgling telecommunications network. <laughs> oh, besides, all that matters is that I've got a second chance with this girl, okay? I mean, I am not the same dumb college kid that used to sit around and eat Captain Crunch for dinner. I am a moderately successful guy who happens to run his own music website. Alex, you don't want to get too serious with Megan. We're young guys with no attachments. We can get any girl we want. Theoretically. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? Megan wasn't just any girl. I mean, all she would have to do is put her hand on my arm. Oh, here we go. The old double squeeze. Well, I'm sorry, but it was amazing. I mean, she'd stare into your eyes, and the corners of her mouth would curl up just ever so slightly. And then, when you thought it couldn't get any better, she'd give you the squeeze. <laughs> I can be ready by seven. <laughs> Hey, Wiseman, Gotham Grill's on 12th, right? Yeah, it's right next to that dance studio with the huge windows. What are those? Sexy sheets. Are those to go along with your sexy Batman comforter? I'm going to the laundromat, Alex. There are women at the laundromat. These aren't just sheets. They're bait. Hi, I'm Casey Parker. Hi, I'm Wiseman. A quick question. What do you think of sexy sheets? Could you not stand so close to me? <laughs> Did somebody here call for a temp? Oh, yeah, that'd be me. Hi, sorry. Come on in. <laughs> Good night, Wiseman. Good night, Alex. Good night, Casey Parker. <laughs> Uh, I got some new ads in that have to go up on the website tonight. I would do it myself, but I got a date. There's this, you know, girl that came back into my life. We had this whirlwind thing going on, and you don't really have to know any of this, do you? <laughs> Can I get you something to drink? Water would be great. You got it. Whoa! No. Hi, I'm Todd. Thank you for cracking my back. Uh, no problem. There isn't a toothless kid with a banjo in the other room, is there? Hmm. Don't worry, Todd's harmless. 
All right, here you go. Here's a to-do list. Um, it's all really basic stuff. You're going to be putting up banners and links, that kind of thing. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me. <laughs> no, she can't. <laughs> My cell phone number's right there at the bottom. You going to be all right? Yeah, I'll be fine. Have a good time. Okay, great. Oh, and hey, don't worry about Todd. If he gets cranky, you just put on Dark Side of the Moon, give him a beer, he'll go right to sleep. <laughs> Sexy sheets. <laughs> Hi, Alex. Hi, Megan. Wow, it's like riding a bike. I wasn't planning on doing that, just seeing you again. You look great. So do you. Should we grab a table? Wait, this is a little embarrassing, but there's something I have to give you. My seventh grade swim medal? I've been looking for this forever. I'm sorry I took it. I know it's your good luck charm. I just wanted to have something to remember you by. You know what, why don't you keep it? Are you sure? Yeah, I can always get another one. Seventh graders are really slow. <laughs> so there I was, I'm stuck up on the ski lift in Vermont. <gasps> what, don't laugh, I was up there for like four hours. By the time they got me down, my fingers were actually turning blue. Oh, <laughs> you would never get me on a ski lift. I'm terrified of heights. What are you talking about? You took me rock climbing. Oh, well, that was before the plane crash. You were in a plane crash? Oh, it was horrible. I was in this little 12-person chartered flight to Nairobi, and suddenly I realized that we'd been hit by lightning. Oh, my God. The worst part about the whole thing was that it dislodged a piece of the windshield, which knocked the pilot out, and I was the closest person to the cockpit. So I jumped in the cockpit, I grabbed the controls, and the guys in the tower talked me down. You landed a plane? <laughs> At first, I was really terrified. But to tell you the truth, it's a lot like driving a car. Is that so? <laughs> this place is fancy. And reasonable. <laughs> you have been working for 45 minutes straight. You are way overdue for a break. Actually, I expected to be a little further along, but somebody spilled chocolate milk on my to-do list. I was startled by the modem. <laughs> you know, Casey, I'm a temp, too. Frankly, this, uh, this whole Puritan work ethic thing, it kind of runs counter to the whole temp philosophy. If you're a temp, why didn't Alex hire you to do this? Well, he asked me, but I was busy tonight. He understands I have important matters of my own to deal with. Is that a waffle in there? Yeah, you want one? No. No. I, I don't want a waffle. I, I don't want chocolate milk. I don't want to play Risk. I don't want to compare how tall we are. And I really don't want you to put me on the phone with your grandfather again. Being a dental assistant is a lot cooler than people think. Like, if you wanted, I could whiten your teeth tonight. <laughs> do you have any plans to become a dentist? No. I do have other aspirations, but I'll probably stay in teeth in some capacity. Perhaps as a consultant. <laughs> this is fun. I thought I was going to be spending the night doing laundry, and here I am with you. Okay, here you go. It's about time! <laughs> I am really sorry. We're backed up at the bar. I, I will be right back with your appetizers. Yeah, you better be. So, um, guess what I do? Prison guard? So you invented Pokemon? Yeah, remember how I used to doodle? Not really. 
Well, I always did. And I had this Japanese pen pal. And every time I'd write to her, I'd draw these little cartoons in the margin. Next thing I know, they're on TV and she never calls me again. Wow. <laughs> Talk to some lawyers about it, but you really can't prove this sort of thing. No. No, you really can't. You know, Alex, I'm really starting to feel that old feeling again. How about you? It's hard to describe what I'm feeling right now. <laughs> doing taking a five minute break coming over to the dark side huh actually i am just downloading some logos but if it makes you feel any better i am now willing to have the conversation about how much foghorn leghorn weighs in real life yeah because you see the thing is he's like 10 times as tall as any of the other chickens oh no technically he's a rooster because he's got i was wrong i'm not really ready for this conversation no that's okay my favorite show is coming on really who's in the center square <laughs> Actually, it's the Antiques Roadshow. Seriously? Yeah. Well, that's weird, because I kind of like that show. Well, why is it so weird? You and I like the same show? Because you use books as plates. <laughs> I, I was on my high school football team. Really? What position? Owl. <laughs> I was the mascot. I love football. I went to the Super Bowl in Tampa. Great town. Just don't ever punch a cop. I didn't believe in the Sasquatch either until this one night on my uncle's boat. Okay, Megan, Megan. <laughs> Look, before you get into that, there's something that I really need to know. What is it, Alex? I'll tell you anything. <laughs> I know you will. <laughs> so? When we said goodbye, you told me it was because your family was moving to Kenya. Was that the truth? Uh, not entirely. Mm -hmm. We didn't move till later that summer. Well, then why did you stop seeing me? That's kind of hard to talk about. Look, Megan, it was a really significant event in my life. Now, whatever it is, I promise you, can handle it. I was sleeping with Professor Markowitz. Professor Markowitz? I had to do it. He threatened to fail me. But he was gay. <laughs> and 90. For what it's worth, whenever I was with him, I was thinking of you. <laughs> hey, you! Did these chicken fingers come off the chicken's ass? Alex, thank God you're here. Of course I'm here. I told you I was coming here. What are you doing here? I needed a cool restaurant. I met this girl at the laundromat. We, we just kind of clicked. Yeah, she seems wonderful. <laughs> I'm scared, Alex. I'm in way over my head. I know, me too. Megan's crazy. Everything that comes out of her mouth is a lie. Beautiful, wonderful Megan from college? I'm not even sure she actually went to college. Did you ever see her go to class? Because I never saw her go to class. What are you doing? We're getting out of here. We can't. She's got my good luck medal. Well, good luck. See you on the outside. No, you can't. I hate you. No. You want to go back in there for your stupid seventh grade swimming medal? It's not stupid. It means something to me. And I sure don't want Megan, there's a dinosaur skeleton under my house, Murphy, to have it. How are you going to get it back? That's where you come in. I'm sitting in water. Finished. Already? Yeah, I even did some extra stuff you didn't ask for. Can you sign my time card? Oh, yeah, sure. I'll uh, put you down for 40 hours. <laughs> so, what's going on? Well, uh, Mrs. Swirsky here from Toledo seems to believe that her microwave stand was built by the Shakers in the mid-19th century. Todd, that's a Victorian pie chest. See, now you're just making stuff up. I am not. Wait, you want to bet? I don't really have extra money to throw away. Well, then let's bet something else. Like what? Hey, Alex. I was thinking maybe we could skip dessert and just go back to the hotel. No! Uh, I, lo I love dessert. Big dessert guy. Okay. <laughs> I was also thinking about 
extending my stay a little. <laughs> what do you think about that? Um, I think that sounds like it might get expensive. Not if I stay with you. Yeah, um, see, the thing is, I live in a loft apartment in, in Chinatown with these two other guys, and we actually, we can't have people stay over. It's in our lease. What are you doing down there? Good evening. <laughs> Megan, you, you remember Wiseman, right? We're always playing that game, see if we can sneak up on each other. Huh? You almost got me that time. <laughs> Cannot do New York in a weekend. You have to stay. I wanted to stay over, but Alex's lease doesn't allow guests. I didn't know that. That sucks. <laughs> I know. I was really disappointed. I'd love to stay, but I just can't afford a hotel right now. <laughs> Oh, I'm going skiing this weekend. You could stay at my place. You ski? Yeah, I almost made the Olympic ski team. So did I. But right before the trials, I got stuck on a ski lift in Vermont. By the time they got me down, my fingers were actually turning blue. <gasps> oh my God. Alex, are you okay? Are you choking? You're not choking? Oh, I get it! It's an allergic reaction! For the food! This place sucks! Should we call a doctor? No, I know no. CPR! Oh, I have to get up to the emergency room. Okay, I'll come with you. No, a cab won't stop for four. You two stay here and settle the bill. <laughs> she told the ski lift story. Didn't something like that happen to you? Wiseman, something exactly like that happened to me. Wow. What are the chances? <laughs> she stole my story. She's insane. At least Megan didn't hold the waiter's hand over the candle to get more breadsticks. It's just so depressing. I had this incredible vision about how everything was going to be, and now it's just gone. I'm with you, pal. I had high hopes for Jolene. <laughs> Can I have my medal? Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Yeah, maybe I'll just wear it on the inside. Six thousand minimum! Oh, are you blind? That's not mahogany. It's not even what? No, that is that is some wow. kind of Naga crap that my spidey sense is telling me could only have come from one decade. Production made in the 70s. Yes! Yes! Victory! Get that shirt off. <sighs> No fair. Well, what was cold this morning? What'd you think? You were gonna get to see me in my lacy, skimpy, see-through bra? You know what? Hey, I'm only one item away. <laughs> yeah, from being naked. I am so much better at this than you. <laughs> oh, no. It's over. I won! <laughs> you just got lucky. Up next, Rutherford B. Hayes, a biography. <laughs> Well, now it's just awkward. Uh, oh. Hey, guys. <laughs> At least she's not wearing a helmet this time. So what went wrong? Why do you think something went wrong? It's 9.30. Oh, yeah, uh, Megan was a psycho. How did you not know that in college? Oh, gee, I don't know. Let's see, I was 18 years old and she was the first girl willing to sleep with me. How did I overlook that? <laughs> no, Sweaty, you made a beginner's mistake. Never pin your hopes on a fantasy girl. Fantasies, by definition, are perfect. You know, one good thing did come out of this. Up until now, every girl that I've gone out with, I compared to Megan and no one even came close. Now any girl with a valid driver's license is looking really good. <laughs> Welcome to my world. Hey, guys. How'd the dates go? Really Great. good. I was just wondering, uh, uh, how did work go? Oh, uh, great. I did all the stuff that you gave me, and I defragged your hard drive. Casey, could you defrag my hard drive? Wow, that's hot. 
Well, if there's nothing else. Actually, you know what, Casey? Hold up. Um, thinking about hiring somebody to help you run the website? Any interest? Maybe. Call me. Cool. Well, hey, don't forget your shirt. <laughs> um, I, um... Hey, I have a question. How'd you get her shirt? We were playing Strip Antiques Roadshow. Of course. <laughs> Just out of curiosity... How do you get that kind of thing off the ground? <laughs> all right, so let me get this straight. Wiseman and I put in all this effort to get real dates. We get dressed up, we spend money. You stay here and you still do better than we do. I didn't even take a shower today. Tonight, the heat is on. Election fever sweeping the Golden State. From who's coming out on top to the props that have passed. We're live with the primary power. He spent 20 years in prison for a crime he didn't commit. Now he's out campaigning for the politician who put him behind bars. Unit 13 finds out why. And it's the hot new show about life after college. We go behind the scenes of random years.